Nessie, Bigfoot, Abominable Snowman, Tully Monster. When you're this iconic and this elusive, you get an awesome nickname. The only difference between these creatures is that Tully Monster was actually a real sea creature that lived 300 million years ago. This extinct icon is Tully Monstrum gregarium. Hi, I'm Tally Loey Mary and you're watching Paleologic. Tully Monstrum gregarium, otherwise known as the Tully Monster, was a soft-bodied thing that lived in shallow coastal waters about 300 million years ago. I call it a thing not out of disrespect, but because paleontologists genuinely don't know what it was. The best way to describe how it looked is like something from a Teletubbies fever dream. <laughs> <laughs> the Tully monster ranged from about 7 to 38 centimeters long. It was tapered at both ends into a shape that sort of resembled a melted, stretched out football. On the front, it had a long proboscis or trunk that ended in a pincer like mouth filled with teeny weeny teeth. Near the base of the snout were two eyes on stalks jutting out perpendicular to the body. These eyes played a big role in the most recent attempt to classify the Tully monster, but we'll get to that later. Its Gumby-like body was extremely bendy and possibly segmented like a worm. The back end of the Tully monster featured a tail with a frilly fin on either side. Based on its flexibility and fins, it was likely a great swimmer and might have been reminiscent of a squid while swimming along the sea floor. Tully monster fossils have only ever been found in a single location, in the strip mines near Braidwood, Illinois. Strip mining is when an open pit is dug to expose materials, in this case, coal. Mining here began in the 1920s, and layers of shale were removed and tossed aside. Not long after, the fossil collectors caught wind of this bounty and began picking over the now exposed rocks. Within them was an absolute wealth of fossils. Back 300 million years ago, during the late Carboniferous, North America was experiencing an uplift, transitioning from being covered mostly in seas to a more terrestrial landscape. The swamp forests in the area where the Tully monster was found created layers of shale in which impressions of these creatures were perfectly preserved. Most soft-bodied sea creatures are never preserved for the ages because they're scavenged as soon as they die. But the conditions in Illinois at the time were just right, with dead Tully monsters and other soft-bodied creatures being buried quickly on the sea floor before scavengers had a chance to do their worst. Because the Tully monster is only found in Illinois, it was selected to be the official state fossil back in 1989. The Tully monster was discovered, unsurprisingly, by a fossil collector named Francis Tully in the Maison Creek fossil beds in 1958. Baffled by what he had found, he brought the specimens to the paleontologists at Chicago's Field Museum of Natural History. They dubbed it the Tully monster. Monster wasn't necessarily a judgment call, but rather simply meant an animal or plant with abnormal form or structure which is, of course, putting it mildly. So far, paleontologists believe the Tully monster to be monotypic, or the only species in its Tully monstrum genus. Essentially, all we know for certain is that the Tully monster truly is an epic noodle scratcher. It's not that we don't have enough specimens to examine. So far, over 100 Tully monster fossils have been found. The issue is rather that this creature is so utterly weird that it defies all classification. When classifying new extinct or extant species, scientists rely on homology, the similarity in development, structure, and physiology of different species of common ancestry to determine how a creature fits into our known groupings. The issue with the Tully monster, and what also makes it so fascinating, is that it is utterly and frustratingly unique. Scientists have attempted to cram it into no less than three phyla during its short time on the scene. 
Some believed that it belonged to the second largest invertebrate phylum, mollusca, or mollusks, due to its anatomical similarities to the pterotrachea genus. This phylum has at least 85,000 living and likely 100,000 extinct species, but even mollusk enthusiasts will admit that this is a poorly studied group, and the true number of total species is probably much higher. Despite those gaps in knowledge, scientists are almost certain now that Tully Monster is not among them. Next up on the list of past potential phyla, Annelida, or ringed and segmented worms, likely due to Tully Monster's segmented body shape. This phylum has about 20,000 members, and much like Mollusca, this group includes both land and water-dwelling species. But alas, according to further studies, it probably also wasn't an annelid. Finally, there was the phylum chordata, which includes all vertebrates, even us humans. Chordates are defined by four main features. A notochord, a cartilaginous rod that supports the body, a hollow nerve cord running along the back, pharyngeal slits, and a tail that starts after the anus. You're probably thinking, I can't possibly be a chordate because I don't have slits in my throat, or a notochord, or a tail for that matter. But I'm here to tell you that you did. When you were in the womb, you had gills and a cute little tail. These characteristics still count towards being a chordate, even if you lose them before you're born. More recent studies, however, have indicated that Tully Monster probably wasn't a chordate either. Other theories about Tully Monster relatives include gastropods, gelatinous free-swimming snails, otherwise known as sea elephants, and the extinct conodont, which resembles living lampreys. Be sure to check out our lamprey episode for more on those weirdos. The most recent debate about what the heck the Tully Monster was started in 2016 with its eyes. A group of researchers suggested that the Tully Monster was indeed a vertebrate, because its eye pigments were arranged similarly to other vertebrates. More research in 2019, however, challenged this assumption after examining the chemical makeup of the eyes with a particle accelerator. It turns out that the zinc to copper ratio in the eyes was actually more similar to invertebrates than vertebrates. So back to square one. All that to say, 65 years after its discovery and we're still not any closer to knowing what the heck the Tully Monster actually was, other than a stranger than fiction, weird as hell enigma. So what should we talk about next? Please let us know in the comments down below and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for coming along on this journey through time. I'll see you later.